we turn to our keynote speaker, Steve Halliday, CEO of National Grid. Ladies and gentlemen, Steve Halliday. Good afternoon, everybody. Thank you very much for that introduction. Star quality, three of you. Like a lot of people in this room, which is why you're here today, I have a bit of a passion about a couple of subjects, uh, and they interlink. And one of those is a concern that we're not developing the right skills we need in this country for the economy we've got in the future. And the second, as Patrick was alluding to, this huge concern about a generation that are potentially going to be lost. And that's where, as Patrick alluded, so much of the focus of the team has been, what can we do for 16 and 24-year-olds in particular? But why do I have those concerns? Are there concerns, number one, because in my business, we have a, a problem and an opportunity. Parts of the business, 45% of our employees retire in the next 10 years. So accessing the quality and quantity of people we need is incredibly important. From all the work in BITC, we see so much of the damage that's being done to our young population from no experience of work and at times a hopeless feeling of ever getting into work. And my third serious note is I've got three kids, three girls, and I really worry about what they're being educated for and their chance to find their way in life. Global youth employment, as everyone knows here, wherever you pick up the newspaper or see on TV, is at an all-time high. There's a brilliant article in The Economist only, only recently that compared global unemployment of young people to try and get you a sense of scale. 331 million, the same size almost as the whole population of the United States. Staggering fact. And as we're here in the UK, and we keep talking, and we've got some politicians coming later about how do we get growth in the UK, how do we find our way, what's the new industrial strategy here? The big question isn't just around that, it's also this question around do we have a mismatch of aspirations and skills? And what role does business have to, have to play in that? Because I would propose whatever sector you work in, and certainly from all of the CEOs who sit on the Talent and Skills Committee, a business in the community, it's crystal clear they're all concerned about the skills we need, actually, in different ways. Are we really developing the skills for the future? And how do we stop talking about this and move into, into a phase of action? Uh, there are people like Patrick Dempsey who not only talk about this but really do something about it and are playing a real part in preparing people for the future. And I really want to just congratulate the hospitality industry. It's staggering what's been achieved in a short space of time. Work inspiration, you heard about. The big conversations and quality apprenticeships, the three really big initiatives. But there's another one I want to mention this afternoon that we're having a rallying, a rallying cry out to businesses, which is about careers advice, demystifying the workplace, explaining to children. In my own business, it's a massive issue for us. How can you convince kids to think about engineering? How can you convince people to do subjects that at school they perceive at times as harder than others? How can you be clear about the type of jobs that exist in, in the future? And certainly, even for the hospitality industry, Understanding science, technology, engineering, and maths is very important. It's particularly important as we upskill the workforce overall. There's a, a piece of research last year that I took part in that PwC ran globally. One of these lovely little glossy questionnaires. You know, what are chief executives concerned about? They interviewed 1,220 across the world globally. You know what the number one concern was? It wasn't markets, it wasn't financing, it wasn't short-termism, it was access to the right quality of skills for businesses. 58% globally all answered the question in the same way. And yet, you contrast that piece of information to the resources organization Manpower at the end of last year said that they had a real problem in filling 31% of their vacancies. So how, how can these two pieces of information at all make sense? And the reality is we're just not lining up the aspiration and the training of our kids to the real opportunities in, in work in the future. And the big piece of that is what this campaign, all the work the business and the community has been doing, 
in trying to get people into the workplace. Give them a real taste of the workplace to inspire them. You'll notice that title. It's not called work experience. It's called work inspiration. Understand what the place of work's all about. Help then correlate back to the things you need to think about. And as the IT consultancies like Capgemini, hospitality industry, engineering businesses, many businesses are now really actively in involved in it. But I have to say, hats off to this industry. Hats off very seriously. Because the size and the scale of the opportunity uh, that you are already creating, and still an opportunity to think about <coughs> rolling it out across what is very clearly a growing sector with fantastic opportunities for young people. And how can we build that partnership between business and the community and the hospitality sector more in the future? Roll out these big conversations that wherever they take place in any sector are hugely successful in bringing young people together, demystifying, helping inspire them, and particularly pricking the conscience, frankly, of all of us in business. And as Patrick said, you know, individuals say, well, I can't do very much. I've only got one. Well, surprise, surprise, when everyone's got one job, one opportunity, it adds up pretty quickly to make a huge difference. We cannot have 1.1 million people, our children, out of work, out of training, and slowly becoming seriously disaffected. Which is why one of the campaigns we've started is, as Patrick alluded to, every single member and business in the community asking them to pledge Will you please just not take the easy way out and advertise your jobs? Will you please do what is slightly hard at times to get in to this section of the unemployed and work hard to bring 25 to 30% of all your recruits from there? It needs scaling up. If it scales up, it becomes extraordinarily impressive. And of course, it, roll, it rolls back into businesses. Pride in the young people. You'll meet some today. Pride in existing employees. Huge pride in the diversity of careers that so many businesses offer. And finally, importantly, I think for all of us who are citizens here, an understanding that slowly we'll get the economy working again. The third priority of apprenticeships has just been so important. And there are businesses across the UK today that are hiring people into apprenticeships that never would have dreamt five years ago of doing that. The big consultancies, for example, never would have dreamt about hiring apprentices and training them. It would traditionally have always gone to universities and hired graduates. One by one, they're slowly taking on apprentices. And surprise, surprise, those of us that have done that for a long time, by the time those young people are 22 and you compare two individuals side by side, you often find that someone who came in at 17 into an apprenticeship program has a lot more about them, actually, than someone through the university. There isn't a right and a wrong. They both work. Apprenticeships are up 32% compared to the same period last year. Clear commitment from the government, from Matthew Hancock, the skills minister, from Mark Hoban, who's here this afternoon. Great champions of, of apprenticeships and being clear that they are not a second best way into workplace and a second best way to start a career. So all these things are making a difference. But fundamentally, it's not about government, it's about businesses. Businesses standing up and taking a lead. If we're really to make a difference, we just have to collaborate and coordinate a little bit more than we are today and inspire, as this whole effort's been, every single business to do its part in some shape or form. Let me just come back to this other plea about careers advice. Because I know personally I've been, I think moaning would be the right word. Whinging, I think some people might say. That we just seem to have lost, and we have not seem to have, lost any focus in our education system on careers advice. It's no longer a requirement in schools. And for many occasions, I've said, you know, we need to get this back. And I think the more thinking that I've been doing and talking to others and listening, the realization dawns that it's almost impossible to expect the education community to know enough about what we need in business to really be the communicators to our children. We have to bridge that by businesses playing a much more active role, working in schools, working with government, working with teachers, to give people experiences. These little work inspirational moments, and not once, but many times through their period of education, and break down some of the mystique and the barriers help. 
We've just got to do a lot more of that in the future than we have done. So it's not just about addressing a social issue. It's not just about addressing a skills issue. It's about everything to do with what we need in business for the future and the type of society that we want to be a part of. We absolutely have to help a generation think about what they can do with their lives and equip them with the right skills for the future. There are real jobs to be had. Your sector just demonstrates that fantastically. But we have to help the young people to get from A to B. So before I just hand you back to our inspirational young hosts, my personal thanks actually for people taking time out for their busy schedule to take half of this conference to talk about this issue. For the, for the British Hospitality Association, Ufi and the team, for the commitment and drive that they put behind this. And uh, it always takes a lot of commitment and drive. But I hope and I plea that no one who sits through this afternoon will leave and think, I had a really interesting conversation in the Continental Hotel. But everyone will leave thinking, I can do something. And however small it is, it will make a huge, huge difference, I promise you. Thank you. Thank you.